Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to deploy the uh, Unify Network Controller on a uh, Linux Ubuntu 20.04 virtual machine. So we're actually going to be installing installing the uh, version 7 of the uh, Unify Controller on the Ubuntu virtual machine. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to set up the VM. So I'm going to be using uh, VirtualBox in this case. So simply open VirtualBox and then create a new uh, virtual machine. So I'm going to call this virtual machine uh, Unify uh, VM. Well, let me say Unify Controller VM. And then I'm going to set the type of the VM to Ubuntu 64 bit. And then I'm going to allocate about two gigs of RAM, which is 2048 megs of uh, RAM. So I'm just going to actually quickly go through the uh, setup process so that we can actually quickly get started with the Unify controller into installation and setup process. So the VM has been uh, set up. So I just need to quickly make a change on the uh, networking configuration so that we can actually let me just leave it on NAT actually. And then we are then going to kickstart the uh, virtual machine setup process. So um, I'm going to set up the VM and then actually in this first step, I'm actually going to first show you how to install system and package updates for the Ubuntu VM. And then thereafter, we're then going to then uh, uh, go through the installation process for the uh, Unify controller. So let me just start the VM now to kickstart the uh, installation process. Okay, so the installation is now complete. So what we're actually going to do is to log in using the account that I created during the installation process, which is what I'm actually typing in now on the login prompt, as well as the password as well. Um, and then uh, I think I okay I actually got that right okay and then what we're actually going to do is to install Ubuntu system system and package updates so first run run the command sudo su this will actually elevate your privileges to the root user um, so I now actually need to type in my password once again which is what I'm actually doing now. Okay, and then run the command apt get update and then ampersand ampersand apt get upgrade and hit end. So it will actually go out to check for updates and then it will actually present you with a list of updates that are available. So you just simply need to hit Y when it finishes checking, it will actually prompt you to say, do you want to install this? And then you simply have to hit Y and then it will actually go forward to actually download and install them for you. So once this is done, I'm then going to then show you how to then install the, uh, to actually add uh, the uh, Unify repository, as well as how to add the GPG keys that are required to install Unify, as well as, as, well as how to actually install uh, open JDK 8 as well as if the as well as uh, the actual Unify software Subscribe to the channel just click on the subscribe button in the video description um, And also like the video uh, it will actually help the channel to grow even further Also click on the bell icon to actually get notifications for whenever I upload a new video so to proceed with the installation, I'm actually going to first change the network configuration on the virtual machine. So I'm going to go back to VirtualBox quickly um, and then click on settings. And then I'm then going to click on the network tab. So you can see here it's actually attached to a NAT uh, interface. So I'm going to change that to bridged adapter and then I'm going to attach it to my Ethernet interface. So it will be as if this virtual machine is directly attached to my uh, uh, Ethernet adapter. So I'm actually going to then check for the new IP address. Uh, let me just clear my screen. So if you run the command IP add list, 
So you'll notice that the new address is 192.168.7.92. So I'm actually going to connect to this service machine using my terminal application. So the command is ssh administrator, which is my username at 192.168.7.92. I'm then going to quickly type in my password for me to then proceed with the configuration. Okay, so I'm in. And the first thing that I always do is to change to root. So simply run the command sudo su. And then I'm going to type in my password once again. Okay, so I've logged into the uh, virtual machine, the Ubuntu virtual machine that we actually intend to use as the Unify network controller. And I've changed to the root uh, user account. Okay, so um, I've, I've actually written, uh, come up with a document with the commands that actually need to be run. Uh, but first I'm just going to test connectivity using the ping command to, okay, so it looks like I've got a connection to the internet there. And then I'm actually then just opening the uh, PDF file that I actually, put, I actually put together with the list of commands that you actually need to run. Uh, for to complete the uh, actual installation so the PDF is actually opening now and we should see a list of the command the commands that I actually prepared it should just take just a minute to to open um, okay you may actually see if I can actually quickly open this file using a different uh, uh, document. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Ah, it's actually opened now. Uh, okay. So the first thing is to install OpenJDK 8. So copy that command, and then in the uh, terminal pro program, I'm just going to paste in that command and hit end. So it's actually installing OpenJDK 8 onto the uh, Ubuntu server. So this should just take about a minute or so to install. Actually, it's going to take five minutes to actually do the uh, installation. JDK8 installation is done. So we're actually going to run the next command. So I'm just going to copy the command and then paste it into the terminal application. Actually, I actually need to remove that spacing, which is this one as well as there's this, actually there's actually a space at the beginning of the command and I'm actually going to run that command okay okay so hit Y and press end it's actually going to download the requested packages that we've, that we've actually asked it to install so it's actually done installing those packages and then we're actually going to then run the next command which is what I'm actually copying now so just copy that command and then paste it in the uh, terminal application and hit enter. Uh, okay, so it's actually done. And then I'm going to copy the third command. So copy that and then paste it in the uh, terminal application and hit enter. Okay, so it's actually done again. And then this is the command that then actually installs Unify. So copy that command and then paste it into the terminal as well and hit enter. So it's actually so it's actually connecting out to the uh, uh, Unify repository and then it's actually going to download and install Unify for you. Uh, so we simply just have to wait for the installation to complete. Uh, it should it should take uh, about two minutes or so. Well, a minute or so to actually install um, and then once it's done we're then going to actually ch uh, configure the unify service to start up automatically and also to st actually start the uh, unify service the uh, unify installation is now complete so the next thing that we're actually going to do is to start the unify service so we're going to run the command service unify start so this is actually going to start the unify service and then once it starts, we're actually going to then check the status of that service to ensure that it's actually running. So it should take about a minute or so for the service to start since this is an actually this is actually a new installation. And then we're actually going to check the status of the service by running the command service unify status. 
okay so this tells us the, this actually tells us that the service is actually running and I actually don't see any errors being reported so we should actually be good to go actually before we uh, start the we actually try to connect to the uh, uh, web configurator to the web console make sure we to check the uh, file the Ubuntu file so make sure we going to run the command UFW disable so actually disabling the unify firewall okay and then we're actually then going to try to then uh, uh, connect to the uh, web uh, based configurator so open up a new browser tab and then uh, we're actually going to then type in the into the address by HTTPS uh, as, and then the IP address of the uh, Unify controller which is actually 7.92 uh, okay so it's 7.92 and then we're then going to append the port 8443 so it should then actually give us a privacy error so it's actually giving us a privacy error because it's actually using a self-signed certificate but if you're actually deploying this in the cloud or if you'd actually like you can actually install a let's encrypt uh, SSL certificate which I'll actually show you in a different tutorial altogether. Okay, so click on advanced and then click on proceed. So this is actually the uh, Unify configuration page. Um, so the next thing that we're actually going to do is to actually name the controller. So we're actually going to name this controller the everything channel. And then I'm then going to click on the to actually you actually have to accept the license agreement first and then click on next. So click on switch to advanced, uh, switch to switch to advanced setup and then uh, disable enable remote access as well as uh, use your ubiquity account. Then I'm actually going to set up an administrator account. I'm just going to type in a username there as well as a password. Uh, let me just type in my password real quick. And then make sure you repeat the password once more. And then I'm then going to specify an email address for the. So you should actually make sure that you type in a, a valid email address here so that if you forget your unified password, you can actually complete a uh, password reset. So uh, click on the enable auto backup option and then click on next. So if you actually have any unified devices on your network, they should actually pop up here. So you just, uh, but in this case, I don't have any, so I'm just going to click on next. And then skip the Wi-Fi setup. I'm actually going to select my country, which is South Africa. And then click on the finish button. So it's actually done with uh, conf the initial configuration for the unified controller. And there you have it, folks. This is actually how you can set up a uh, unified controller on Linux Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. This is actually uh, network version 7.0.3, which is actually the uh, latest version as of the time of recording of this video. Uh, so I'd like to thank you very much for uh, watching this video, and I'd like you, and I really hope that it, it's actually been uh, very uh, informative.